Hey, you there. Just wanted to let you know you are now listening to the AK Mindset Podcast. Yo, welcome back to the AK Mindset. And it's the big one back again. No, it's that time of the month again. And today we're talking episode 34 of the podcast. And as always with me, is the whole gang this time. Speak to the people, please. What's good, people? I hope all is well. Like Ed said, um, big pod episode. Excited for this one as per usual. Um, yeah, let's go, man. Hype is real. Yeah, what's going on, people? Back again for another episode of the podcast. Um, going to be a fun topic today, so hope you guys enjoy. And yeah, we'll swing it over to Ed. Sir, yes, sir. Like Daniel said, it's a interesting, interesting topic this time. And the topic we're talking about is fan service in the world of anime fan service Ooh. and before we get into it i have a little icebreaker just to inform the people who might not know what fan service is or what kind of animes have fan service so we're going to start we're going to say if this anime has a little bit of you know etchy scenes in it if it has None at all, or if it's just a full on etchy series, you no know, full on services up to the wazoo. So, yeah, that's how we're gonna do it. To get started, oh, one sec, I can't even see the screen. Uh, so, right now, we have first one up that should be showing is Fairy Tale. Fairy tale. So, you guys, what do you think? Do you think it has a little bit of, you know, scenes here or there that might be considered fan service or urchy? Do you think it has none? Or what do you think? It has a lot of. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not going to lie to you. Some parts of it makes me want to say it's urchy because of how, like, you know, over the top certain scenes would be. Um, but I feel like uh, it can't be because it's not as extreme as some people uh, may think but i think it depends on obviously your experience with it so i'm going to say it's not etchy but i think it's borderline like it gets really close mm. uh, it's tough you know because it's, it's one of those ones where it's got etchy elements but um like does that define the whole uh series series i, I would say hmm i would say it mm, i would say it's an etchy it has it's it's got Insane? a lot. Yeah, it, it has a lot in it. So it does have a lot. Like it is a crazy amount. <laughs> have a lot. You are right, and it's technically technically in the category considered an etchy. A little bit, even though that's not the main one. But yeah. I think it's quite right in the middle. Like you guys are right, but obviously when it says fairy tale, that's not the first one that comes up. You know, it's more adventure that comes up for that one. So. I think you're both right in the same way. You know, there's no right and wrong answers here. We're just literally explaining to what the people, what fan service is or what HG series looks like. Well, Fairy Tale is like literally smack down in the middle. It has a lot for it not to be considered. But at the same time, it's not what the series is about. But yeah. yeah that's how I thought about it. I was like, it's not really the whole premise of the series. So we can I fully categorize it as as etchy? Because there's a lot of etchy series that you know the focus is that you're getting mm. this type of content, like you're getting the type of fan service, and it's showing this type of appeal. But with Fairy Tale, it has a bit more. So I was gonna say, mm. so honestly, it fits, but it's like one of those borderline ones, isn't it? Yeah, borderline, and that's because of Lucy right there. Not only they do a lot of her. Lucy. Not only because of Lucy. Not only because of Lucy, but she's the main. She's the main because she's a. I'll she's the main character than Lucy. Really? Yeah. She literally oh, had yeah. a scene when she was basically True. naked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I know. I keep forgetting her. To, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Erza does have crazy bits on her as well. But yeah, let's go to the next one. Okay, next one. What will it be? We have everyone's favorite. Fire Force. So what do you guys think? Yeah, Fire yeah. Force. Etchy in the middle or not at all? I'm not going to lie. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's etchy, for real. It's etchy. There's, it's too often. It's too often. And it's one of those when it's even in inappropriate scenarios where we actually, we're trying to be kind of serious now. 
but then randomly there'll be just somebody in an interesting um, position. They'll find themselves in with no clothes randomly or starting, you know, just be weird. So for me, I think it's uh, etchy, even though it's not really the sole focus. It's just how often it appears in the series. Well, I love the series, by the way. Fire Force is a cult. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say, I would say, um, if I have to take a hard stance, it's definitely similar to um, Fairy Tales and Etchy, like Rajal was saying, too many moments where they're focusing on uh, those kind of elements. I, the one scene that comes to mind where uh, David production were extra horny was with uh, Arrow when she gets assaulted by, I think her name is Horma or Homura or something like that. She gets electrocuted and then they decided to um, focus on her breasts and everything. I just remember because of what Rogel said. Flashback. Well, I have to give a special shout out to that really thick, voluptuous. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. Evangelist. Oh, oh, <laughs> I sent you guys the picture in the group chat. I knew you were coming. <laughs> I don't oh, mind sorry. if she attempts to kill me. End of flashback. That one time, and I was like, <laughs> I'll never forget. <laughs> but yeah. 100 percent etchy and you even have the fan service character self tamaki abomination the king of fans <laughs> hey is she the goat is she the goat <laughs> don't use that word with her man don't you not use that word for that character my god Rochelle. no 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 we're not gonna let you no not this time but <laughs> But it's similar to Fairy Tales. Does technically know what the series is about, but this is even more overwhelming sometimes than Fairy Tale does, and it's almost specifically always about not every time, but I think most of the time it's just focused on that one specific character. You know what made me almost stop the series? I think it was when she was, uh, you know, the guy with the eye patch, uh, yeah. Burns, yeah, and she, but and she was decided to see him as she was running. That she tripped and all her clothes came off. <laughs> Fam, I don't know why. I was, <sighs> I was like, what in the world? It's not this her is... fault. She's just very unlucky. It's, it's, a, it's a sickness. The so you guys should be more point. considerate no, and empathetic. <laughs> Let me not even speak. Because in the manga, Some people yeah, out here suffering. In the manga, hmm. Yeah. When, when you get later into the story, you see what it really is. Oh. Oh, don't tell me to get. Oh, yeah. Well, technically, similar to Fairy Tale, it's not one of the, like the major, major genres of it. But at this point, I think if you said it was an edgy, I would not be surprised if you did. But it's technically in the middle. He it has. It's not at a zero because he has a lot, but it's not a fully an edgy series. But yeah, it should be to be fair. But that's Fire Force. And um, what's next? Okay, next up is. Hmm. Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah. What do we think, guys? <laughs> yeah, I'm think... going to say a not, but I haven't really... It's one of my biggest sins. I haven't really watched um, these <gasps> um, series concretely, like properly. Dun, or dun, officially. Dun. Yeah, it's crazy. I've wow. seen um, Turn in your episodes. Your right now. I, it's crazy. I've watched... I've even I've like watched a couple episodes to certain points have not finished the series at all so i'm not even the best person to ask but from what i've seen it can't it's not edgy but you know because of my lack of my ignorance i might be wrong yeah man yeah man you, you missed that one that one scene where the yeah i'm joking man it's it's not edgy. <laughs> I, was, I, bro, I was gonna play on right now I was, watch, I was about to lock off this pod episode you mad i'm gonna about to invest time <laughs> Listen, the most fan service you get is with maybe the plump lips with Olivier. That's what mm. I always hear about. The lips and mm. then her brother always got the chest out and that's about it, man. Yeah. yeah. You man are right. This is not, this is zero levels of fan service and edgy. Just good storytelling that doesn't rely on eye catch. I'm joking. I'm not. Yo, you're mocking <laughs> it. You're mocking it. Yeah, not just but, coming um, out now. You know the one's <laughs> agenda. Agenda coming out right now. But yeah, like you guys are right. This doesn't have um, any kind of fan service or any kind of edgy. And like Daniel said, it's just sometimes Olivia's brother just stripping, you know, and being a man, as he says. But um, but yeah, this is 
on the lower level, much, much lower level compared to the other two. And yeah, you guys are right. Next one. Okay, next one up. Hmm. <laughs> Elite Wars. Let Elite me say it. Wars. Everyone's favorite. <laughs> hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Good Wars. Let's let's go to the big fan first. What do you think? Do you think this album? I'm sorry. This story is a uh... relax. <laughs> Fight relax. Series, two series. This is not actually. This is a wholesome story about young chefs trying to make the top, really refining their techniques and their <laughs> food knowledge and challenging each other so that they can push each other to the very next level with, you know, astute mentors who guide them to the promised I mean, land. Should I bring a Bible or like a holy food, book? So they have food, to swear on so we don't lie at this point. <laughs> hey, look at in result. Always. Okay. AKA Elite Wars okay, I'm in. in my bag. It's not it's not an etchy. Okay, locked in. Yeah? You, of course locked not. Yeah, I'm locked in. I'm locked and loaded Glock ready. Cool, 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 what, cool, cool. What do you say? Thank you, what, what do the Ten Commandments say? When I read it says do not lie. So <laughs> that's crazy. What, what I'm hearing right now is that it's, it sounds like a lie. Cause what do we see in literally the first 10 episodes, people eating food, clothes bursting out, breasts bouncing, <laughs> cheeks out. Stop, man. Even a tentacle one time. So, yes, it's an etchy. Don't try and play. And um, notice how I picked the season one visual when it was still I'm good. Finished. Before <laughs> when went, it was still it, good. When it, went, when it before it descended into the depths of depravity. Yeah, man. This one, the genres do stay etchy bold and clear i'm afraid be lying if it's not it's not a right or wrong answer but there's a wrong answer for this one unfortunately and yeah dana got it is etchy for the people out there if you want to know what etchy or series of fan service is this is the number one suspect even more than fire force this is food wars unnecessary scenes of mandem eating food and all of a sudden we are seeing stripped unwanted male and female things we do not want to see hmm. you know, is, hearing, there, is it shows the man that are no, not no, eating no, no. good enough that they're not stripping that's all i'm hearing i'm hearing that the food is not hitting enough that you man don't just start embellishing off the the, the clothing just start you know feeling the type of way i'm about to end this series now <laughs> this part now If you tell me you start stripping if you eat food, we cannot associate with you, my boy. If that's what you're trying to preach. I will like not you... <laughs> deny or say I do. I will, I will not. I will not. My lawyer said I should be like careful. A, that sounds like a yes to me. Your lawyer is uh, in... Ah, that's... My lawyer is working overtime. Ignore man like Grigel, even though he loves the series for some odd reason. Respect it, you know. We support people's illusions in this podcast right here. Illusions. <laughs> <laughs> All jokes aside, though, but yeah, this is a prime example of an etchy. And some people still say it's a good anime, with, even with the etchy, you know. Some people disagree heavily, some people agree, but it is a prime example of an etchy. Oh, okay. Next one, please. <laughs> next one up. <laughs> High School of the Dead. What do you man think? Hmm. I don't know. You know. I don't know. From the from the girl getting the bullet between the breasts and the <laughs> the cheek shots and the I don't know, man. I don't know. But I think I'm gonna go with Etchy still. Mm. What do you think, Rijo? Saying that, that those are reasonable things to happen. No, uh, on no, occasion. <laughs> no. But Rijo wants I'm to be contrarian today. He wants to be contrarian, bro. <laughs> It wants to be different. Just, oh, answer, <laughs> just answer with your heart, bro. Don't sidestep the, the, the reasons for this for this icebreaker. This is the king of edgy and unnecessary scenes, bro. Post okay, this child. is the one to be watched. Poster child, if you watch it, this is what people say that oh, I don't like anime because it's weird. This is what I'm talking about right here. Yeah. This is what I recommend. Seriously? That you're no. <laughs> Pushing people away from anime, man. What do you mean this is the one you recommend? I'm gatekeeping. 
I'm purposely pointing <laughs> in the wrong direction, so they stop. <laughs> it says no more people in my anime. Uh, I think it would be very unhinged if this is the thing you recommend to people to watch. I really want to get into anime. What should I watch? Mm. You know what? Start with High School of the Dead. Fam. Then switch over to to Food Wars, then Fire Force. Those are the holy. Have you trends. seen these events, anime events? They're too packed out. There's too many people loving an anime. We need to stop them at all cost. Hmm. Okay. All right, okay. man. Okay, man. Yeah, you're on. If you recommend this, um, I don't know, man. Because first of all, not even Unhinged. finished. Not even finished. Rest in peace to the author. But yeah, he passed yes, away. Sir. So you're never getting the ending. And personally, no, not just honestly. It's just not good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, the 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 story just gets hurt. Too many times, but un- unnecessary. Yeah, it's well. This is not opinion about the show. It's just if it's edgy or not. And this is the king, if I should say. If I should give it a crown, this is this is the gold medal for edgy series. Pop. <laughs> Next one, please. Next one. Naruto. Sasuke. Everyone's favorite. Sasuke. Naruto. Sasuke. <laughs> Everyone's favorite anime. Yeah. Well, yeah. This is the. This is the style for many people. What do you think? Do you think it's uh, etchy or not? Hmm. I would say not etchy, but it has its moments and it likes to kind of, you know, flow into its, its pervy nature. But it doesn't do too much where you're like, it takes away from the show where you're like, ah, oh, this is specifically doing this to grab our, our attention. Mostly it's done comedically, which is kind of, different kind of from etchies where it's supposed to be about the law and stuff like that uh so for me not an etchy yeah. yeah daniel i agree not an etchy got some elements i think the most etchy you see is probably with tsunade and when naruto does yeah. his sexy jutsu yeah and jiraiya oh yes the, the do you remember the, do you remember that one scene where hinata and china no Oh, I don't know if it was a movie or I don't, can't remember. But when I saw it, I was like, what is this? That's the most edgy scene. Just go, not search it up because that, you don't want that on your search tab. But there's a scene with Hinata and Shino. You, you like, should have told me that like, before I started searching up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Start... Of course. I, every, that's why I'm always ready. Every time you guys are talking, I'm ready to search that up. I'm here typing away. And then you said, don't search it up because I don't, you don't want it on your. You have to leave that. <laughs> Before you finish the sentence, I'm typing already. <laughs> wow, but it was just, it was just, no, it's a prime example of an etchy scene, but it was just mis- a bit misplaced in like, the narrative because narrative is more of the comedy or sometimes making fun of characters like we they do with Jiraiya sometimes. But it just seemed like, what was the point of this? Well, apart from that, you guys are right. This is a very low level uh, when it comes to fan service and etchy scenes. But yeah, that's all right. And let me know if you find it, Michelle. But, I will. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, next one, please. Next one up. Yes, it's another one of the big three. One Piece. Do we think this is an etchy series or not? Nope, not an etchy. It's yeah, quite big elements. as well. You guys are well. You're correct. This is definitely not etchy. <laughs> Some obviously questionable scenes here and there because of our favorite character Sanji but apart from that it's not an edgy series this is an adventure action no edgy tag attached to it and next one please next one up ah to love room what That's do you guys think? Heavy. Have you guys watched this before? <laughs> uh, Bro has been suffering. You good? No. <laughs> <sighs> um, I don't need to watch it to know what it is, though. It's an etchy, 100%. I've never watched it either, but just looking firstly at the title, um, the the characters in it, just looking at that. Do you know what? It seems like an etchy to me. It's giving the signs of etchy. Yeah, if I should give like a silver medal or bronze medal to an etchy series, it's going to be to love rule. And I don't know if you guys have heard my grievances with the show. It's just a 
one of the ones I couldn't finish because I was just uncomfortable throughout the edgy scenes. Wow, so, it looks funny though. Looking, it's that's the funny thing. Yes, has, it has some good comedy, the romances, but uh, it's too much for me personally. Some people might like it and enjoy it, but this show is not for me. And it's a big, big, big edgy series. But, yeah. Okay. Next one, please. And this one, everyone's favorite space cowboy, Cowboy Bebop. What do we think? It takes place in space. Yes, sir. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, I haven't, I, I haven't watched this show, but uh, I don't think it's an etchy. Maybe with Faye, you get some scenes, but that's about it. Likewise, um, I've not watched this show either, but I have seen scenes, and the scenes never depict, or even like comments. Usually, you get like uh kind of idea by what people say they would at least mention that oh, there's some uh interesting scenes that you might want to search up um in private but that has never come across so um i'm gonna say no no edgy just quality content well, correct. so it's crazy both of you have not finished I've, i started it but i haven't finished it but cabo bebop it's it's good it's good and no there's not really any kind of edgy scenes in it. You know, some typical anime here and there, but it's not a edgy tag. So, yes, we are correct. Please. Next one up. The last one, I think. Last one. I only want to hear... Like your... I only want to hear one opinion from one person in this one. Yeah, okay, and that's Daniel. Past, we're just going to skip past that. Yeah. Ignore... Ignore that man. <laughs> it's an it's an etchy series, but it's an an example of one where it enhances the series rather than drags it down. Mm. Okay, you are correct. This is an etchy series, but I think like our oh, good friend, responsible, smart, who appreciates good story. Daniel said. It elevates the story. It's one of the best etchy series and, you know, it doesn't bring down the action. And yeah, it's an etchy series, but etchy series done right. So hopefully with this little icebreaker, we understand what kind of series we're talking about, fan service, what we consider too much. Depending, this is our opinion as well. So some people think, you know what, it's not enough. <laughs> but we're considered too much, we're considered light, what we're considered in the middle. And yeah. Yeah. And Going into the topic properly, what do we think about fan service, guys? What are our opinions on it? Hmm, I kind of have like mixed views on fan service. Like, I don't think I think because it's kind of in a way stigmatized because that's what everybody when they hear like you're you're into anime and stuff. They initially they're thinking, ah, uh, that's what you like. You like the the anime yams just bouncing in your face and that on the screen and that is you know what i mean that's how that's what the that the portrayal is um but i think especially when you look at series that you, you can say is definitely add it value and it's done in a uh a way that is not really problematic where it's not like the main focus but something that kind of adds to the comedy and to the story. I'm like, I, I'm more than happy to watch a series that has fan service in it. I find it very, most of the time, very funny. Like, especially if it's used well. So for me personally, no problems at all. Yeah, I think for me, I don't really have a strong stance for or against it. Um, but I do tend to shy away from series that i feel like are heavily predominant um i feel like it would be a main focus because i'm just like i don't really think i want to be there for that but i mean i'm not i don't really think i'm not instantly like oh yeah it's fan service it's bad um but i'm not i'm not i'm not gagging for it you know i'm not because most of these characters and i think a big thing for me is a lot of these characters are in high school or they're between like True. 10 and at the most maybe like 10 and 10 to 20 right so now i like i'm that's why i, I don't really have that oh yeah i'm here for this fan service because i'm like bro like i don't have any interest in teenagers so yeah it is weird when people like specifically watch 
things for the fan mm. service. Like, you know what I mean? It is a yeah. bit odd because it's not really it's not really what kind of makes anime special or interesting. What makes anime special is everything outside, you know, what reality can't bring you because it, it's not feasible to do with real people. And you know the expressions the uh how dynamic it is how vibrant it is all of that uh, and how that can now be put together into a great story so when people like watch something that's just they like oh, specifically i'm going for the fan service that's when it kind of comes like that's the problematic nature of it because mm-hmm. you'd be thinking firstly i'd be kind of questioning two things firstly i'm questioning why it's marketed like that why these writers would write um people who are not even legal in a certain way like and put them on screen in a certain way like what are you trying to insinuate what are you trying like what are you trying to promote and then secondly like why are you fixated on just that aspect of it like you know what i mean that's just it's it's a wild kind of scary uh something that's kind of held back the anime community in many ways Mm, i think i agree with both of you um especially on that sentiment of um, it holding back the anime community a little bit because um i think personally my opinions on fan services i'm not really excited to see it i'm like oh let's go watch this specifically because of as etchy scenes in the oil has fan service i just watch anime and sometimes it happens to be there as i go but the anime is still good at least i think that's what i am but i think my issue with it most times is like i like sharing my love for anime so i want people to watch this i want people to watch that and it's a lot harder to recommend for me when it's heavily like indulging in like fan service and edgy especially with the with what Daniel said about you know what some of these characters in high school sometimes even in middle school I'm like what is going on bro how can I even explain this like this is what I love this is what I enjoy and I'm just like oh let's watch Fire Force and it's like oh I apologize for this one specific character just doing this all the time so I think that's just my opinion on it but um just linking to my next point do you think fan service takes away from like anime, and in what sense do you think it takes away from anime? If you do think it does, mm. uh, um, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. I think I wouldn't say like I think you said it can it. So it yeah, it can take away depending on the series. So um, I'm going to use Fire Force as an example because I think most people have seen it. Fire Force. This that's an example where you can see it has a negative impact on the story because, um, for example, you have Tamaki and um, she's in a stressful situation. Um, I think it's when when that guy with the stars in his eyes when he he she found out he was a snake. But then in the midst that in the in the midst of that tense situation, you have her falling over, um, shoving her breasts in Shinra's face, shoving her cheeks. And like you, you kind of just can't take the moment seriously. It's supposed to be emotional. Like she's just seen the betrayal. This guy, he's working for the evangelist, but because of the inappropriateness of the fan service, you're just like you, you kind of just tired, and you're just like, oh, this is just um, it's not good. So I would say fan service can have a negative impact on anime, but it can also have a positive impact as well, like in um, Killer Kill. Yeah, I definitely agree, um, especially with Fire Force, especially with a series where you know that it actually doesn't need it. Like, like you can have that kind of element, but like Fire Force, everything they do regarding um, just the general theme of the series and then the stuff they uh, try to build on, uh, in some moments you're like, it's very unnecessary for like that character to now be stripping off randomly. It doesn't, it, like, it doesn't make sense. And in that aspect, I can 100% say um, it does kind of take away from it because it becomes um, rather like tedious experience, like just to keep on seeing random nonsense that is not really logical and really kind of takes you out of the flow of what you're experiencing and what you're watching. And 
uh, I guess for some people that can be definitely something that really is intrusive on their anime watching experience with a series and such as this. Um, but you know, I think I did. Would you guys ever, or have you guys ever recommended uh, Echi kind of series? Because I wouldn't mind recommending Fire Force. Because I feel like that's a, even though it has a matter, I think it's more like funny and like it's something that I would happily recommend and say enjoy it and feel like somebody wouldn't feel too weird. I'm like, it goes crazy, but I don't think they'll feel too weird. Mm, I think it depends who I'm recommending it to. If I'm recommending to like an uh, experienced anime watcher, then I would do that. Um, but when it comes to new, I think the only one I feel comfortably about, like recommending, might be Kill a Kill, and um, maybe there'll be other series there that. But apart from that, I just don't. It's like no, I'm not ready for that kind of conversation, you know. So it's not looking at me weird. Like, is this what you want? Is this what you enjoy? So when it comes like, to recommendations, yes. I watch Fire Force. <laughs> what are you on? When it comes to recommendations, I just go like, what is the best series that can introduce you to what anime is? So you know when people talk about like easy to recommend shows, like maybe like. My Hero Academia, Death Note, stuff like that. People take that route to come in. But when it comes to, like, new people, I just, I just stay away from it, personally. Yeah. I think, um, like Ed said, it really depends who I'm going to recommend. Because if I was going to recommend Fire Force, I would say it has to be someone who's familiar with anime because a lot of us, uh, I think we don't realise how something that we see as, uh, it's a bit questionable can look very off to someone who has no exposure to the medium not really familiar with the kind of tropes that you see in these series not and um how they can be a lot of very out of place so i think for fire force definitely has to be someone for me personally who um first of all no can tolerate that kind of thing and all the the more the action they would be more focused on the action and they wouldn't really have the fan service, they wouldn't let it kind of detract from what they're seeing in terms of action and then the fights in the series. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely weird to think that we are semi like desensitized to some of these <laughs> antics. Uh, yeah. you know, they, like you said, like the, even the shock value is not uh, as shocking when you experience it because you're like, I've seen it so many times. You're either like mildly frustrated annoyed or you like you couldn't care less because ah it's just just another day just another anime uh but obviously like you said other people um definitely won't have that first uh experience or reaction like that because i was just thinking yeah they'll just see it like i see it so i was thinking ah they would just see it and be like yeah, it's, it's weird, but, you know, we can push past it and look at the other cool characters, look at all the other cool themes and the story and the interesting, like, powers and dynamics and history, all of that. But, you know, some things will stand out more to a new viewer than, uh, you know, someone who's well-experienced. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I think, yeah, sometimes anime... Like the fan service does take away from it because what's that? I need to feel comfortable and enjoy the series. And sometimes some edgy scenes go too far. And once you start going to like, when no one is apparent, like, oh, wait, this person is in high school. That doesn't just sit well with me personally. And even though, we're, like you said, we're a bit desensitized from it sometimes. It's like, ah, uh, there's only this little scene. So it's right. And the, the series as a whole is still good. Um, but sometimes, like, you do, do it too much and it gets to you, like, ah, uh, on this, I don't even, there's the writing or the anime in general is not that good for me to sit through these uncomfortable scenes. So I think it gets to some points where fan service definitely takes away from from what the anime is or what the anime is trying to portray. Especially, if, like, it was, like, adventure and you're like, so I'm interested in where this character is going to go, the kind of character development, the relationships are going to build, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, there is this scene specifically, or here are multiple scenes that kind of like, but this is not needed for the story. So I think it does have that kind of effect sometimes. But in that sense, do you think there were any good anime? I know we have a one in our head immediately that was ruined by fan service to you. Me personally, no, but that's because of how like when I'm watching, I'm I'm the type of person I'm very relaxed. 
I'm I am how I watch my anime. Like I would I'll watch even if it's bad, I'll probably just watch it and get through it and be like, ah, oh, do you know what? It was decent, it was alright. Like, so I don't think for me personally that fan service has ever ruined an actual show. Um, like in its totality. I do think it's affected the way in which I view the show. And obviously that also affects how I um, conversate around uh, the show and my views on the show. But it didn't really ruin the show itself. Because I'm, I'm guessing for me, I'm even guessing, like if they wrote it like that, that's how they wanted it to be. be. Like there's, you can't, I don't feel you can ruin something that that's what its intent was and that's how they wanted to portray what they're they're doing you can have i feel like for me it's more of i will have an issue with the reason why uh the that the culture around anime um shows that you know majority of the shows are based in high school and then you have um problematic themes that because of uh just how the high school's um theme is so like apparent or rampant in the industry like they're going to put there'll be cases where these themes problematic themes are going to be in series where there is high school um students and young you know underage kids so like it's one of those when is I'm more judgmental of the people producing it rather than saying it's ruined the series. Like that's what they wanted to do in the end. That's interesting. That's a good perspective. Yeah. What about you, Daniel? Um, mm. I I think similar to Joe, um, I wouldn't say any shows, any good shows I've watched have been ruined, ruined by it, but I would say definitely, I would say hindered. I would say so. Um, one example for me is Monogatari. I can't recommend that series mm. because of a lot of scenes that happen in the show. And um, a lot of them, personally, I believe are just unnecessary. They don't need to happen. Um, I don't know. And it just kind of makes me scratch my head because I don't understand how the writer can write this really engaging character journey and then just insert these scenes that happen too many times for my liking. But... um. Yeah, that's just um, it, it's just kind of sad because Monogatari is a great series, but I can never recommend it because of those scenes. Because if when you get to that scene, you're just gonna be looking at me and like, bro, why did you <laughs> recommend that? So, and I don't even want to mention any of them because like they all of them are bad in my opinion. Um, and then I'd yeah. say another show that um, I would say is hindered by um, fan service, but. I don't think the show is good as Tenjo Tengi because they just put a whole load of nonsense in a pretty much which which is supposed to be a martial arts series. The amount of um crap they put in there with the fan service was very bad. And then Kakaguri as well because um when you read the manga, although you have the element of fan service, it's not as emphasized as in the anime, in my opinion. And um it kind of takes away from the gambles and some of the character interactions and introspection that you see because the series when you take away the fans of it is is still very solid and it's not the main um factor it's more about the dynamics between the characters how they're interacting in the school and um i think people have this perception of kakaguri because of the anime and how it's over exaggerated and how the characters are looking so yeah yeah kakaguri is going crazy actually crazy and it's I think, like you said, is those like high stake gambling moments. You're like, why do you have this expression? Why are you being on serious right now? Like, you know, like, this is you. This shouldn't be turning you on. Like, relax, just d- win the gamble and uh, you know enjoy. It. But right, don't enjoy it that much. So in that moment, like, it, I would say, bringing that to mind, yeah, that definitely definitely hinders. Yeah, yeah, and I agree. I think with the Kaguri one, I think I just feel like sometimes it's just too much. Like for especially how good I think the series is, like it's just one of the like in general. I don't think there's many animes that have been ruined for me. But I feel like like Kaguri is like maybe it hinders me from going to like the second season. Like you're good, but you're not that good for me to be like uncomfortable. Like I said before, I could agree. Like the one I just I found odd one of the scenes is with the girl with the eye patch and the gun. I'm like, what? She's just a no. Weirdo. 
<laughs> I, I just did not like it. I was like, so I was like, oh, this season two comes. I was like, all right. I have a massive list I have to go through. I just read this series. Don't, don't, go back don't to watch that. season two. They go, they go off kilter <laughs> in terms of where the story is compared to the manga. Yeah, fair enough. I think the only series I will say maybe ruined, because I think ruined is if I just don't continue with the series and I drop it. I think that I can count as ruined is um, To Love Rue. I think that was just an abomination of a series right there, personally. So people, I know people like That's it, an abomination. but I just. I low key look at you weird if you tell me that's your favorite series. Some people watch it and say, okay, it was good, it has aspects. But I just, I really don't like that series. Um, I think other series like um, Fire Force, I think that's the one that's annoying me a little bit because I think that's the only reason I haven't really caught up. I haven't dropped it. I really want to watch it. But I get into it and I see that one character. I'm like, why is she here, bro? And I don't want to feel that about any character in the series. Like, I think like she might have importance somewhere else. And if I don't really care about her character growing or anything because of. The kind of what she does or what the manga can make her makes her do or what the directors maybe it's not in the manga I don't know make her do then I don't know so it's no, affecting it's it a little bit. Don't don't try it. <laughs> it's him. <Mangaka. laughs> just blame him. I've, re- I've read I've read the mangas. So I don't know if it's just uh, but if that's his thing. But because it's weird because I feel like what Soita didn't have that craziness. That's in what it. I'm saying. I don't know. He he unlocked <laughs> some what's it um horny package with Fire Force bro, for like. <laughs> He yeah, downloaded. So. He downloaded something. Top of the range packet. Top of the range. Nah, it's a pen. Man. We know this, but for some reason, it's like you no. Know With this pen, I'm gonna give it upgrades and put fan service on top of that. Um, mm. But then there's the one that it hinders me from watching it, but I don't think it's drawing because I haven't obviously watched it. It's the one you talked about. Is it Monogatari? Uh, Monogatari. Monogatari series. The whole thing because it's interesting. I've seen like TikToks and Twitter threads here and there. I'm like. This is really interesting, but at the same time, in those TikTok videos and um, Twitter threads, there's always someone saying like, yeah, how do, guys, how do you guys watch this when this this, this, this thing happens? Or how do you watch it when you know that the the mangakas are weird? I'm like, what are you talking about? Do I really want to watch the series? And I think that's why I have. I won't say it's ruined, but it's just kind of like, mm-hmm. mm, should yeah, I watch Ed, it or should I watch it? Ed, yeah. You specifically, you cannot... You cannot watch it because <laughs> one, one one of the scenes because of, because of how I know how you are, <laughs> you cannot watch it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it will, it will just, for you. It will just you be a write off. I'll tell you after the <laughs> recording. I'll tell you what happens because it, it's just a write off. <laughs> oh, that's that's actually so sad because it seems so interesting and yeah, it's just so. I think that's. I don't think anything I've watched has really ruined, but it's like hindrance and like hesitance and to watch the rest of the series or to even start it. But that's for me. There's something I want to mention. It's it's weird because so I was talking to this girl at work and I realized that girls either either really dislike fan service or they love it. And she loves it. Like she absolutely loves fan service. Like she'd be showing me clips, telling people oh. have conversation like it. And I just find it so funny that it's like I of the two extremes. Like they're always either it was of the um like end of oh this is detrimental. It shouldn't shouldn't be viewing female characters in this way. It's not adding value. It's problematic. Or there'll be people dressing up like these youths and yeah. full on you know going all out. That is like it's just an in- interesting observation for me. Yeah, crazy. But in that same sense, let's switch a little bit. Do you think there were any, I don't know, personally, I don't think there is, but do you think there are any series who were elevated because of fan service and Echi? Or I will switch a little bit if there's not much about that. It's like, or there any anime that you watched or mangas maybe that you think, despite of the fan service and Echi, the series was not hindered. It was still really good and it still hit the high levels that you wanted it to. Hmm. Well, okay. First up, I will say, uh, well, I don't think this series is good, but the fan service actually, if it didn't have fan service, I don't know what they would have been doing. But Keijo, I don't know if you know about Keijo. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> listen, that series, not good, but listen, it was fun. And obviously they had the fan service because it's uh, basically bot wrestling. I don't know, like, bro, it, it was so dumb, but it was it was hilarious. Um, I always have to shout out the one girl who did um unlimited 
she had the Babylon's Gate Gilgamesh, but with bots, and she could um adjust her skill sets. <laughs> it was it was it was so stupid, but it's it's hilarious. I love it. And then um the obvious one, kill the kill. This goes with the theme of the show about um clothing and then how it's kind of constricting people from being them their true selves and then how um being comfortable being in your own skin is a big thing thing in there and showing off the skin as well so yeah killer kill and um Keijo are my picks interesting um, what about you for me, uh, uh, for me um first one is miss kobayashi's um dragon maids mm. very I love this series, and I think it was very enhanced by the the subtle use of like ecchi in regards to some comedic uh, moments, and just added value to some of the the scenes. Weirdly enough, I don't. I, it just it just did. It doesn't. It's one of those when you watch it and it's not a detriment. Uh, I think mostly might have been because it's basically an all female cast. So oh, when it was okay. when it was happening, there was no. It's not really from the like a male watching and seeing them. It was like most of the time it was just all females um, going by the dragon maids' antics. So uh, when they had stuff that were like hypersexualized and stuff like that, it it was like more, you know, not. I can't describe it. You know what I mean, it wasn't really weird or odd or like it was relaxed or it was like there was no prying eyes trying to sexualize them and stuff like that. So yeah, I really enjoyed that show and how they used it. And then the on the opposite scale, but still adding value, um, prison school. Because I feel like <laughs> it, <laughs> that's a great. Joke. I feel like it just it just killed me. <laughs> Yeah, it absolutely killed me. And it just enhanced how um, extreme the situation was and how weird and how odd um, everything that was going on uh, in there, a reality was. So, yeah, those two topics for me. Cool, because no matter what, if that I would never recommend it to anyone, even if you're like, you've been watching anime for all your life, I'm not recommending it to you. But it just, I watch it and it gives me jokes. I laugh. I feel like the edgy doesn't take away from that comedy aspect of it. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not recommending prison school to anyone. Oh. Another one, but this might be a, a long time ago. So I'm not sure. I'm only going to rewatch it. It's High School DXD. Yes, sir. Yeah. I had that yeah. on my list as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's the one I haven't watched in a long time. But it's one of the things like, you know what? It's still a good series to me. Still a good. So I'm not recommending it again, but it's still a good series to me. I don't know about Elevated, but I think it's definitely important. I think still important to the series, and it's without it, I don't think it's gonna have the same effect. Prison School and that's good XD, but yeah. And well, who was your favorite? Who's your favorite girl? Give me your top three, quick, rapid fire. For what? Which high, one? High School DXD. High School DXD. It's been a long time, but um. Um, the main red hair girl, Rimmers Grimmery, what was that yeah, name? Yeah, got that one. Yeah. Grimmery. She's, yeah, and the black hair girl, Echanon. she's number two. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yes. Not very you guys remember the, name, the names. And the one with the white hair. Oh, uh, um, Ross, Ross Weiss or something like that. Ross Weiss. Yes. Yes, those okay. are my top three. Oh, okay. Okay, that's that's a good, solid, that's a solid front three, man. I like it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah. Then the the what I want to talk about is um fan service but on the opposite side, I guess. The male fan service. You know, when fan service when it comes to males, what do what do you think is is seen as more tasteful? Because I haven't seen them mm. as much discussions on how or oh, this is terrible or we don't want this in our anime, you know, it takes away from the series. A good example I would like to bring up is free. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys are watching it swim in. And I thought someone recommended it to me. I was like, okay, I need to watch it. It's about swimming. It's good. And I was watching it. I was like, what am I watching, bro? Is this meant? <laughs> <laughs> this show wasn't meant for me. But I finished it. And I, I didn't hate it, to be fair. Well, it was of, it, that was uh, for a specific demographic. But at the same time, I was like, you know what? 
the story was still it was still it wasn't bad. It's not my favorite anime, but it wasn't bad. And yeah, so but what do you think? Why do you think male fan service is seen as more tasteful, basically? Mm, I think it kind of reflects society, you know. Men is I think it's probably easier to do. You know, men can just walk around with their tops off and then that's just mm. free fan service right there. But it's not really seen as doing anything extra. Whereas with um with women, they're usually more um covered up. They can't just walk around with their chest out because of like how society is. So I think I think how society is in real life kind of translates into how it's seen in media. Okay. Yeah, um, I definitely agree. I think it's also like the like power dyna- dynamic aspect of it. So mm-hmm. obviously, when you see these, how these uh, male characters are either um, you know sexualized or put in, it's never in a. They never look vul- vulnerable. Like it's never like a vulnerable where it's like it's more. It's always like empowering. Like you always see them. It'll be chest up, flexing, hair shining, right, glistening, all of that. Do you know really in their like stride? Whereas when it's the opposite, it's always like the shy cute girl don't look at me i'm vulnerable like which will make people more uncomfortable you know what i mean where it's like because mm. it feels like it's not wanted whereas with the male one when you see my man chest out pumping it looks it looks like he's basically saying look at me look at me i'm, I'm shining right now you know what i mean so yeah that's that's my two pence on that Hmm. Yeah, that's a very good point about the kind of vulnerability of how some of the characters feel um, because you know the power dynamics and everything that's really good I didn't even think about that I think my where I was going to come from is that it just seems even though, apart from like in few people think it's more tasteful I think it looks sometimes looks more tasteful like a good example we just talked about it is the in quotes fan service by Nanami in that Jesus Christ in the latest episode with the helper and everything some people think that's fan service I know it plays with uh, like imagination. It's like technically that's still it, and people still like that. Or like Toji with a you no know, tight outfit he has on, and it feels it just it looks tasteful, not just feels tasteful. I feel, and on the other side is just like why. I also like to think about like it also doesn't make like the gender feel uncomfortable. Like most men don't feel like oh. I don't feel uncomfortable in this situation because of this character being topless. But I feel uncomfortable. It means I have to hit gym extra hard the next day. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> but I mean, uncomfortable <laughs> in the sense of like, you don't feel like, okay, this just makes me feel uncomfortable in terms of like sexuality and everything. Yeah. Like, I don't feel safe. No, it might make you insecure. Like, you know what? I want to be like Toji. You know, that guy, or I want to go to full much alchemist. Like, this guy's just pumping his chest out every time. I want to be like him. But I feel like in the odd sense, like, why are they looking at her in that kind of aspect? It doesn't feel safe. I don't feel like this is nice and everything. So I think that's the kind of, I think that's why probably. Yeah. After that Toji episode, I couldn't look in the mirror for a good week. Oh, on, <laughs> I said I was troubled. <laughs> my, heart, my heart was troubled. I just, I said, this, this ain't it. <laughs> I said, I can't keep going on like this. I need to make a change. <laughs> I heard it though. <laughs> yeah but um so next i just want to come to an end slowly and surely but what do you think if we're going to give three recommendations it can be the same you know there's not many when it comes to good edgy and fan uh fan service series anyway but three animes or maybe manga you think you know what you really need to watch this because it's really good yeah i might have fan service in it i might have edgy in it but it elevates the series. It makes the series good still, and the story still gets told without it taken away from it. What would you recommend to people? Mm. I wanted to say though before before the recommendations. Do you think fan service is just limited to what we've been talking about the etchy stuff? Do you think it can be expanded to more broader things? Because I was thinking like fan service could be you know, and I know people hate this series, but. Um, in Seven Deadly Sins, you get Escanor versus Meliodas, and that could be seen as a fan service fight because it's like something that's heavily debated in the fandom. And then the author decides True. to actually put mm. it in the story because he knows everyone 
he knows it's a it's a fight that everybody wants to see and it's like kind of just appealing to the masses and it's um i i just feel like he could have found service that's um not always actually like if if older i don't think he'd ever do this decided to just do like three chapters of mihawk versus shanks i think like the whole fandom would just collapse because explode <laughs> And then, like that's you could say that point. you could say that's that's fan service because of like oh yeah the old the author's like kind of giving us something that's um I don't know I, I think it the kind fans of fans want yeah yeah what the fans want so I think like maybe fan service can point. just be expanded to more things than just the uh, you know the um etchy etchy stuff that we do see which is very 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 common so that was just something I was thinking about. That's a very good point because you know what? When people say fan service, it's always gone. People always think, you know what? Even me bringing up this this topic, I was like, fan service straight into the etchy and like kind of scenes you have. But fan service, the word itself is not really doesn't have a negative kind of connotation to it. I think with the anime and with the etchy, it kind of adapted that kind of net- negative connotation. But technically, when some fan service is like the author just doing what the fans think, like you know what? I'm, I'm gonna. This is for you, my friend. For you, have this. You're gonna have Zoro versus Sanji full out fight, and whoever wins wins. And you know, you know, the fan base is gonna go super crazy. You know what? Actually, let's have uh, let's have Ichibe versus um, the versus Aiza and see who's gonna win. I know that's the first service when it comes to that. Or like, you know what? What about if these two characters speak? Maybe not even action. If these two characters speak. What what is what kind of discussion are they gonna have? You know, even better or, if a you know? show or series comes back from hiatus. That's the Don't biggest speak. fan service. Oh, okay. Don't speak to hiatus. <laughs> hiatus, I feel that, man. I feel it, but let's be let's be real. One text center is not coming back. <laughs> like, not I'm not waiting for it to come back, man. Well, I'm not. We, I'm we've done for man. myself. <laughs> I want, I want, I want, I want it to come. We've oh. moved on. Uh, not quite yet for some series <laughs> since it's my favorite but you know what? let's not stop being sad what do you guys what are your good fan service that you you're going to recommend to people mm. okay i guess well, etchy series since we now know fan service doesn't always mean etchy okay so if i were to recommend an etchy series hmm i don't want to say kill a kill because i've mentioned that like a billion times already so I'm going to rack my brain, <laughs> so you might have to come back to me. Cool. What well, about you, Joe? Yeah, I suppose. I'll start with the Glipner. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Very <laughs> good series that I feel uses um, that kind of fan service etchy moments very uniquely. And everything about like power dynamics and the characters is definitely a good watch um i'll repeat what i said last time as well um miss kobayashi's uh dragon maids elite series absolute elite um just following this lady who uh is just she's an adult and she's going through normal life work life and her life is then transformed by me and these uh kind of mystical creatures and because it's like i said previously all female um casting it is very different the way like the fan stuff is very cute stuff and because it's like it's more like girl and girl kind of lesbian kind of vibe is not very it doesn't feel like intrusive it just feels like oh they're just very good friends all having fun and then they're having their moments when they're being cheeky and then lastly i want to recommend backstreet girls uh, <laughs> <laughs> elite, <laughs> elite, yes. elite comedy yes elite comedy that i you will enjoy and it will surprise you and the whole concept is idiotic and crazy uh, and just how they do the fan service because obviously um just because they are now women they're just confused and lost and they don't understand their bodies and that it just it just makes it more interesting. So those are my three. <laughs> that's that's a good that's a good series. Now I'm gonna go next and I will I will double down on the Backstreet Girls. This that's an amazing comedic series and 
yes, please watch it. It's very funny. It's very, it's, it's just so good, in my opinion, anyway. And I will stick on the comedy route and go, even though I just said I would never recommend it to anyone, at least face to face. And now I can <laughs> hide, hide behind my, my, <laughs> my podcast, at, our podcast and say, you know what? Prison school. If you want to laugh, yeah, yeah. watch watch prison school. It is <laughs> it is good. You you're gonna crack, you're gonna laugh out loud. If you don't, maybe you're broken somehow. Well, I'm joking, <laughs> but it's it's a it's a really good series. I think um, you really need to watch it. Um, if you want to laugh, and the last one on top is High School DxD. If I'm even gonna rewatch it myself, you know, so recommendations for both of us, you guys and me as well, because it's been a while. But it's from what I remember, it was really 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 good series and for such a etchy heavy kind of series the story was amazing it was amazing i have a few other ones but i think daniel might speak on or if it doesn't i'll bring back up again but yeah yeah i i don't think i will but so my first one is scum's wish um mm. it's a it's a romance series kind of very focused on toxic relationships um people in interacting with people who they shouldn't be dating and then kind of just exploring romance in a different light more of a more messy light and um, one of the few um, romance series that actually kind of shows them sleeping together and then has them interacting um but very it's um it's not an easy um watch but it's, uh very i found it very entertaining and um i really liked the main character too it's the artist from oshina ko uh Men- mango she's the one who wrote it so if you're if you like her art style then i recommend that and then my second one is rosario plus vampire um this is one of my the shows that i watched when i first went to anime and when i read the manga i was very impressed with in terms of like the combat but it's basically it's basically a harem but it's not a harem because you know who he who he's really feeling but yeah, Skune and um, Mocha, Inner Mocha. Yeah, that's like um, first waifu, can't lie. But yeah, great series. Um, hey. Yeah. You said it, man. That's what I was going to say. But I was oh, like, I feel like days. that's a baby. That's a baby. So I'm going to keep quiet. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great series, man. I can't lie. I mean, I, I was always I was always on Mocha, Mocha. I mean, I know Don's love Kurumu. And um, what's the other one? Misery, mm. the ice girl. But nah, man, I, I'm always sticking ice with the first one. Ice queen. Oh, okay, yeah, misery, misery, yeah, misery. I feel it. Yes, sir. He's a waste man, though. The main character. <laughs> <laughs> he fixed up in, in compared to the manga. He he's a lot better. The anime, I don't know what they were doing because I don't know, man. These McDonalds were doing something else. <laughs> Oh, oh okay. I, jokes. I guess we are we are oh, almost at the see end. series. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, just a quick one at the end. What do you think are other kind of problematic tropes that our lovely, lovely love for anime thing like tends to go back to? Oh, uh, you go, Rizzo. I I don't. I don't know if it's problematic because it might be really true, but do you know, like the old man pervert antics. Um, I said it is... might be really true, <laughs> <laughs> but it might be true. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, is I'm because do you know what? It might be true. Look at all these old men um, manga writers and what they're <laughs> what is happening. You know what I mean? So like, it, it might be true. <laughs> they get locked up. <laughs> That's very so, true. So I'll double take it. I was like, it's problematic. But is it problematic? <laughs> it's problematic, but true, I guess. <laughs> That's like one of the big ones. You just yeah. always see that. Like, there's always going to be a hint of it. I don't yeah. know why. That's a big one. That that one is that one is bad. Um, panty yeah. shorts, awful, and, crazy. Um, oh. In fact, yeah, no, that that one is the most one because I just I really just don't understand. The appeal there's no appeal bro like that's it's just weird it's just weird man so wow it's, it's weird do you know what pains me is when i'm enjoying this series and it comes out of nowhere do you know what surprised wow. me like one that comes to my head right now is um what's what we just watched about going back in time um 
Oh my days, summertime rendering. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. It, it, that was wild. It was so yeah. unnecessary. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? I'm enjoying this series, it's good. Amazing series, by the way, watch it. And I just, I was like, huh? To the yeah, point where crazy. they should be like two, three times. I'm like, what's going on? So that never makes sense to me. And sometimes like, they really should be showing it for this kind of character specifically. That was a young child, to not do that. And it's like, oh yeah, but that's the story though. And it's like, yeah, odd, odd. But my big one, my big one is... Characters who are like a thousand years old, but they look ten. Hmm. I'm finished. <laughs> yeah, man. So I'm talking million from um, slime. I'm talking uh, Mercury from Gate series, especially Mercury from Gate series. What? No. Looking at and it. some characters That's are so likable as well. But a thousand, but they look ten years old. It's like just make them look thirty at least. You don't have to make them an old woman. If they want to, but I feel like they should. I think they need to make them old and wrinkly. I agree. You know, they'll feel like, oh, they're young and everything, but at least go 20, 21. Don't go 10. That's literally. And they look small and just like, oh, this is just going to, yeah. I really don't like that. And so many characters and the way they dress sometimes in Zor. Million does my head in. And another character from, um, uh, what's it called? Um, jobless reincarnation. Oh, the the Chris card, the the demon emperor. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know, man. I just, I don't know. Odd, odd. Million and that was like, and it's like the young that's supposed to be like thousands of year old years old. They look like kids, and also dressing like that is odd to me. But um, that's my pick. Did you know that's the animators? One. They were gagging to animate her. You know, they were fighting over it. They were fighting. They were, fighting. They, were like, they were fighting over to animate her scenes. I was like, bruv, why? I told you, they're problematic. Handcuffs. Yeah. Now. Jail. Fam. And then, Jail um, time. In Cyberpunk. That's what you're fighting for. In Cyberpunk, they wanted to take out, what's that, the little girl? I don't know. I, I forgot her name. The the small girl. I haven't you know, watched that, yeah. The one with the girl. Oh, okay. Let me not say anything then. But, I know of the character, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, basically, the American dons were like, oh, yeah, we don't need her. But then the Japanese guys were like, bruv, we're not making a show if you keep kick her out, basically. <laughs> At least the American dons have respect. But I said, there's no show without this. Is that Rebecca? Character. Yeah, that's or... it, that's her. They were like, Rebecca. bruv, keep the lolly in the show. I'm like, bruv, <laughs> this is the <laughs> hill you want to die on. <laughs> they said, this is the very hill. <laughs> Whoa, there's that one. Yeah. This dance. That's why people say like, oh, Japanese guys are weird. Even though it's like very like that's very broad statement. There's not everyone. But sometimes the stories you hear about these men, it's like you're not helping, bro. You're not helping the stereotype at all. Because why are you fighting for a lady to be in the in the series? No, the stereotype is killing their community. Yeah. It's really attacking them. Hmm. That's my biggest one. I just find it odd. Especially when they, they dress them up and it's like it's, it's just question they look like head. a kid and they dress like one i don't care about that but if you have them dressing like an adult woman like wearing like the skimpy clothing i'm just like bro what's the, the clothing, plan what's the like plan tube tops and everything it's like it's like why why and someone this, this character is actually good as well like they're well written you, know, you see the backstories and everything like oh this is a funny character but i just can't get over the fact that million looks like that why why? That's the question that comes to my head every time. But that's 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 the topic for today. It was it was funny. It was enjoyable. We have experienced our grievances and some good shows. That you know what? Go watch Killer Kill today. It's the one for you. Well, yeah, fan service. Do you guys have any other thoughts? Any other discussions you want to talk about? Hmm. Um. Let me see. I don't. I don't think so. No, I think it's a good good time to end it we'll be back again soon yes sir yes sir yeah, likewise man elite elite conversations as per usual man yes 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 we appreciate you guys listening to us this episode and all the previous episodes have listened to us the ak update our tiktok our instagram twitter you've been there with us it's been a long journey so we appreciate it and thank you for listening to us as always and hopefully we shall be with you next month and talking about an amazing topic again all right thanks for listening peace peace